All right, students, in this video, we are going to continue our adventures in solving one-step equations, but this time we are going to increase the level of difficulty by using rational numbers. Fractions are rational numbers. So what do we do here? Right. Let's take number one. The process for solving these problems all right, is really identical to the process that you used for integer equations. But you've got to deal with the fractions. So that's why we spent some time actually learning how to find common denominators and get these fractions set up to where we can work with them together. So let's see what we do. We have in number one, x plus one-fifth equals negative seven-fifteenths. So remember what our goal is. Our goal is to get the variable x by itself. It's on the left side, so we'll keep it on the left side. But right now, it's not by itself. It has one-fifth added to it. So we have to get rid of the one-fifth on the left side. Right now, one-fifth is being added to x. So in order to move it, to move it over to the right side of the equation, we have to do the opposite operation to whatever is being performed. So right now it's being added, so we do a subtraction. We subtract one-fifth. Just like that. And remember, what we do to one side, we must do to the other side in order to keep the equation in balance. So I subtracted one-fifth on the left side. I have to subtract one-fifth on the right side as well. Okay, so on the left side, one-fifth minus one-fifth just equals zero. And at this point, it's, it's not going to be possible for us to immediately perform a subtraction here because the two rational numbers we're trying to subtract have different denominators. So before we can do anything, we have to find a common denominator. Let's bring this little problem here down and do some side work down here real quick. So let's just make some space below. And what we'll do is we will write negative 7 over 15 minus 1 over 5. And now we have to play a game of finding the common denominator here, the lowest common denominator. Well, the lowest common denominator between 5 and 15 is going to be 15. So we have to multiply 1 fifth by something that will turn this 5 into a 15. So we have to ask ourselves, what times 5 equals 15? Okay, it's going to be 3, right? But we can't just multiply the 5 by a 3. We have to multiply the entire 1 fifth fraction by 3 thirds. Okay? So let's perform that. We'll rewrite negative 7 over 15 minus... 1 times 3 is 3 over 5 times 3 is 15. And now we can actually perform the operation. Okay? Because negative 7 fifteenths minus 3 fifteenths is equal to the difference of the numerators, negative 7 minus 3 over all of it over 15. So what is negative 7 minus 3? 
So on a number line, okay, here's the number line. You're at negative 7, and you're subtracting 3, so you're going to be moving to the left. So here we'll make some marks here. This is negative 8, negative 9, and negative 10. So we're at negative 7, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So negative 7 minus 3 is negative 10. So what this equals is negative 10 over 15. Negative 7 minus 3 equals negative 10 over 15, but that can be reduced. So how can it be reduced? Well, we can divide both the top and the bottom by 5. Okay? So we'll divide the top and the bottom by 5. Negative 10 divided by 5 is equal two, negative two, over 15 divided by five is equal to three. So we've reduced our fraction down to negative two thirds. So let's go now back up here. Negative seven fifteenths minus one fifth is negative two thirds, okay? So we're keeping, got our equation still, with still cool equations, still together. Now we've eliminated everything on the left side except for the x, so we bring x down over here, right here, x equals this, negative two thirds. Okay, so we're, we're, we're almost ready to call it good there, but we've got to check our answer. So we think that x is negative two-thirds. Let's move down here and test our theory. If x is negative two-thirds, then I should be able to add negative two-thirds to one-fifth and get negative seven over 15. So I'm going to move down here and rewrite this problem. The problem was, this is my check, okay? The problem was x plus one-fifth equals negative seven-fifteenths. x plus one-fifth equals negative seven-fifteenths. So here's the question. If I put in negative two-thirds for x, right, I'm going to substitute negative two-thirds where x was. And I want to see, is negative two-thirds plus one-fifth really equal to negative seven-fifteenths? And one way you can ask that question using mathematics is you can put a question mark over the equal sign. You want to test this hypothesis. Well, in order to add negative two-thirds to one-fifth, we have to find a common denominator again between three and five this time. Well, the common denominator is 15. So what do I have to multiply by three to get 15? Five. So I'm going to multiply negative two-thirds by five-fifths. And I have to multiply one-fifth times something. I'll multiply one-fifth times three-thirds in order to turn the five into a 15. Okay, so we'll simplify here. Five times negative two is negative 10 over five times three, which is 15. Okay. 
And now I will add 1 times 3, which is 3, over 5 times 3, which is 15. Okay? And what we want to know is, does that equal negative 7 over 15? Well, what is negative 10 plus 3? Negative 10 plus 3, okay, now we're moving to the right. You have negative 10, negative 9, negative 8, negative 7, okay? So negative 7 over 15 equals negative 7 over 15. That's a true statement. Therefore, that's our double check right there. And going back to our answer, which was negative two-thirds for x, we double-checked it, right? So put a double-check mark, put this in a box. I think I'll stop there. This second problem, I mean, it's more or less the same thing. The only step was you'd have to convert this mixed fraction into an improper, 2 times 1 plus 1. So 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. And then you'd have b minus 2 equals 3 over 2. And you'd have to, well, you know what, now I'm doing the problem. I might as well do it. Let's just do it quickly. So the first thing we're going to do is convert 1 and 1 half into an improper fraction. So we'll just rewrite b minus 2 equals. And now we'll rewrite one and one half as two times one plus one over two. So that's three over two. Remember, we want to get the variable by itself. The variable is b. Right now, two is being subtracted from b. So we add two to both sides. Right? On the left side, negative two plus two is zero. But again, we have a problem. On the right side, we can't just add. So we have to do a little side work down here. We have to do 3 halves plus 2. It's useful to remember that any whole number can be written as a fraction by putting that whole number over 1. So I really have 3 over 2 plus 2 over 1. They don't have common denominators, so I can't add them. But you have to think, what can I multiply by 1 in order to make it a 2? Because the greatest common factor here is 2. Or the lowest common, I said greatest common factor, the lowest common denominator here is 2. So I have to multiply 2 over 1 by 2 over 2. And what this gives us is, first I'll rewrite 3 over 2, because this didn't change. Now we'll do this. 2 times 2 is 4, so it's plus 4 over 1 times 2 is 2. So now I have 3 over 2 plus 4 over 2. You add the numerators, 3 plus 4 is 7, you have 7 over 2. Two. Okay, so that is the answer. So let's go back up here and write B equals seven over two. Now you want to convert this back into a mixed fraction. So more side work down here. You have to divide 7 by 2. 2 goes into 7 3 times. 3 times 2 is 6. 7 minus 6 is 1. Okay, so here's how we write this. We have the whole number here, 2, right? This is going to become the denominator the big number is 3. Okay, so 
the quotient of the division becomes the whole number, 3. And then you put the remainder, 1, in the numerator position over the divisor, which is 2. Right? So it's quotient, remainder, divisor, 3 and a half. So we think that B is equal to 7 halves, which is equal to 3 and 1 half. That's our conjecture. So we're almost ready to write a box around it, but we got to check. So let's go down here and let's do our check. Check. Right. First, let's rewrite the problem. B minus 2 equals 1 and 1 half. B minus 2 equals 1 and 1 half, which we said was 3 over 2. So we'll just write B minus 2 equals 3 over 2. All right, so now we're going to substitute for B what we think B is. And we think B is 3 and a half, but also we can call that 7 halves. So we'll say, does 7 over 2 minus 2 equal 3 over 2? Right, well remember, 2 can be written, this is a question mark, 2 can be written as 2 over 1. So now it's just a matter of turning the 1 into a 2, because the lowest common denominator between 2 and 1 is 2. So we have to multiply 2 over 1 by 2 over 2, right? Sometimes we put these in parentheses. So let's rewrite. We have 7 over 2 minus 2 times 2 is 4 over 1 times 2 is 2. Again, we want to say, does this equal 3 over 2? Well, 7 minus 4 is 3. So now we have 3 over 2 equals 3 over 2. This truism right here, this identity here, is a double check confirmation that the value we found, 3 and a half, is correct. So you can put this whole thing in a box. And we can just do check, check to indicate that we are right. So we have completely solved using no calculator, just algebra, these two one-step single variable equations. So if you found this video helpful, please give the video a like. If you have a question, please post it in the comments. And if you have not already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you are always alerted to new videos on this channel. Thank you.